Hello and welcome to this episode of The Journeyman. My name is Seth. Have you ever wanted to know how to solder copper pipe? Well today I'm going to show you the tools, materials, and give you the know-how on how to solder like a pro. Let's get started. All right, let's go over some of the tools that you're going to need to do this job. First off, you need a way to cut the pipe. This is an adjustable pipe cutter. Goes up to inch and a half pipe. Don't use a hacksaw. It leaves tiny burrs all over the thing. It's a mess to try to clean up. If you can, just get one of these or borrow one from a friend. Next up, you need a way to clean the pipe. When you buy copper pipe, it has a residue on it. It comes from the factory that way. You want clean metal. So what you want to get is sand cloth. This is the open mesh type. I find it works better for me because it offers less resistance when you're cleaning the pipe. If you're using little fittings like half inch copper, you're going to want a fitting brush. If you don't have tiny little baby fingers that can take this sand cloth and stick it into the half inch fitting and clean it, you really want this. And if you do have baby fingers and I've offended you, please accept my apologies. After you cut the pipe and clean it, you should use a deburring tool or a reamer to get that lip off of the inside of the pipe. That helps increase the flow and it cuts down on turbulence when the water is running through. Okay, you've cut, you've cleaned, you've deburred the inside of your pipe. The next thing you'll want to do is use flux. Flux is what you call a wetting agent. What it does is it cleans and prepares two similar metals to be joined using a filler metal. Just get a good water soluble flux. Don't get tinning flux. Tinning flux has small flakes of metal in it and you do not need that for what we're doing. Just get straight old soluble paste flux. If you plan on soldering and you don't have flux, then just don't plan on soldering because it's not going to work. You have to have flux. It's what helps draw the solder into the fitting and it just will not work without that. You will need a acid brush to apply your flux to your fittings. Next up, solder. Now all solders are not created equal. If you take a look at this one, it's called 50-50. The reason it's called 50-50 solder is because it's 50% tin and 50% lead. This is not for use on potable water systems, water that you drink or bathe in. This is for use on closed loop heating systems. You don't want to be drinking water that has lead in it or bathing in water that has lead in it. So when you buy solder, do not get 50-50. What you want is a lead free solder. This is 95.6% tin, 4% copper, and 0.4% silver. It contains no lead at all, so when you buy your solder, get lead free. In order to solder, you're going to need heat. So let's talk about torches. For anything in a residential application, propane is going to work just fine. On a big job where you're soldering like three or four inch copper pipe, you're probably going to want an acetylene torch, but for what we're doing, propane is going to work just fine. A small little torch like this, you can get at your hardware store for, I think I got this one for $16 for the whole deal. Will work just fine from anywhere from half inch pipe, even up to one inch, you'd be fine. In order to start your torch, you're going to need a striker. These are super cheap and a great way to start your torch. Do yourself a favor and do not start your torch with a cigarette lighter. Here's the problem. Say you're trying to start your torch, you turn your gas on, you light it, and you, you've started it but you don't really know that it's going. And then your wife comes out and asks you if you want spaghetti for dinner and you guys start talking about salad and croutons and you're holding this right here and it melts the top off of your lighter and explodes. 
and decimates a three block radius. That won't happen, I'm just kidding, but it could explode in your hand and cause you personal injury. Don't start torches with lighters. Let's talk a little bit about safety. You'll want eye protection, a good pair of gloves, and if you're gonna be around anything that's flammable, make sure that you have a fire extinguisher with you. Sometimes when you're soldering, it'll drip onto the floor. Now, if you're gonna be over top of a rug or any type of fabric, good luck getting that solder back out of fabric. It just isn't going to happen. What you want to do is put down a drop cloth. What works good for me is a bucket with about an inch of water in it. That way, when the solder hits the water, it instantly cools and it reduces the splatter. So that's about it. Now let's get to soldering. Let's briefly talk about the anatomy of a fitting. This is an inch and a quarter 90 degree elbow. The most important thing you need to remember is that this part of the fitting, the part that receives the pipe is called the cup of the fitting. That's the part that after you fit your pipe, you're gonna fill this inside with solder. All right, we're ready to solder. So on go the gloves. Safety first. Always protect yourself from burns. We're going to take some half inch pipe and cut it with our pipe cutter so that we have two pieces to solder. Just tighten it down a little bit, work it around your pipe a couple times, tighten it. Go around a couple times, tighten it. You don't want to force it, otherwise you'll bend your pipe. There's our riser piece, and this piece will go right here. Next up, take your sand cloth and clean the end. Just wrap it around, turn the pipe in your hand, all you have to do is clean enough for the cup of the fitting. You don't have to clean all the way up here. That's far enough right there. Clean both ends. Make sure you're down to bare metal and that you've cut through all the residue so you're down to the shiny pipe. Next, take your fitting. In this case, half inch copper 90 degree and your half inch fitting brush. Turn it clockwise. Insert it into the cup of the fitting. Keep turning when you pull it out. Beautiful, shiny. Do the other side. Keep turning it, pull it out, perfect. Next, you will want to use your reamer to prepare both ends of the pipe that you cleaned. You just stick that blade in there and go around a couple times. You'll see the shavings come out. Make sure that they come out of the pipe. You don't want them to stay in there. Just like that. Flux. Every time you use flux, you want to stir it. Because when this sits around or gets hot, the chemicals separate inside and it won't work the way that it's supposed to. So just stir it up real quick. to make sure that it takes the solder correctly when you're soldering. 
Now when you're putting on flux, you do not want to use a ton of flux. It isn't necessary. What happens is, if you put too much flux on there and you heat it up, that flux is going to run down the inside of your pipe. And when you heat it up and you put solder on it, it's going to follow that flux down inside. And sometimes that can come loose and cause damage in your water system. So what you want to do is take your acid brush, get just a little bit of flux on the tip of it, and just put a thin coat all the way around as deep as it will go into the fitting. Make sure you cover it all with flux though. You don't want bare spots. Otherwise, your solder won't stick to that spot. Do the other end the same way. A big mistake some people do is they'll flux both ends of their pipe and stick the fitting on. That's wrong. You got to flux the inside of this fitting as well. Again with a thin coat. You can see where you've put it because it turns the finish kind of dull. Oh yeah. That's looking real, real good. Take your piece of pipe, insert it into your fitting. I've got my vise set up here. We'll strap it in. And then we will get ready to fire up the torch.